Uh, here we'll discuss some general and background information related to the end of year data submissions in CalPads. This slide has the four CalPads EOI data collections with the high level view of the key data elements that are submitted in each. Unlike fall one and fall two, end of year reports on the entire academic year from July 1st of the prior calendar year to June 30th of the current calendar year, which means any new students or students who have left during this timeline will be reported. EOI 1 contains course completion information, including Carnegie units and college credits earned, as well as leadership and military science course completions. EOI 1 also contains the CTE participant and completer information and the work-based learning or WBLR file. EOI 2 contains program participation information that is submitted in student program or SPRG files. EOI 3 contains information on cumulative enrollment, student behavioral incidents, the student absence summary, graduates and completers, homeless youth, and students who take the summative LPAC and test as RFEP. EOI 3 contains the student incident, student incident results, student offense, and student absence summary file types. EOY4 contains information on students with disabilities, including statuses, plans, meetings, services, and post-secondary statuses for students with disabilities. Uh, these are reported in Meet, Plan, Serve, SWIDS, and PSTS files, though the serve will not be collected uh, in the 23 to 24 academic year. Uh, please note that the student enrollment or SENR file and student information or SINF files must be up to date in CalPads before uploading any of the EOY files. The end of year data collections begin on May 7th this academic year. This is when snapshot reports, CDDs, and CERT errors will become available. However, May 7th is not the only date to know. Um, and this slide contains the uh, CalPads data collection calendar for the 23 to 24 academic year. Uh, census day this academic year fell on October 4th, 2023. That was the beginning of both the fall one and fall two data collections. Fall one had a certification deadline of December 15th, 2023, followed by an amendment window and a final deadline of January 26th, 2024. Fall two had no amendment window and only a single deadline of March 15th, 2024. We're now in a brief period of time between the fall two and end of year submissions. The end of year submissions again begin on May 7th, 2024. There is a certification deadline of July 16th, 2024, followed by an amendment window and a final deadline of August 16th, 2024 this year. There is a sense of urgency regarding the final August 16th deadline as it's earlier uh, than in previous years. Last academic year, the deadline was August 25th. And this is due to the earlier release of the California School Dashboard. The CDE has stated that there will be no extensions to this August 16th deadline and LEAs will need to adjust local practices to allow for an earlier certification. Um, and one day before that, on August 15th, 2024, the CDE will pull cohort data from the CalPads ODS uh, to calculate the adjusted cohort graduation rate, or ACGR. These are the suggested milestones for the 23 to 24 school year. Uh, these milestones have an added emphasis this year as CSIS and the CDE will be monitoring LEA performance and meeting these milestones uh, during the EOY data collections. Between now and uh, June 28th, you should be completing data population in your local student information system. You're also able to begin posting files to CalPads, reviewing validation errors, and reconciling CalPads with your local student information system now. This work should continue uh, through June 28th, at which point you should be completed with data population. From July 1st through July 12th, you should be resolving your certification errors, reviewing snapshot reports, and updating records as needed to ensure that your data is error-free, accurate, and reliable, reflecting the facts on the ground at your LEA. Error-free by July 12th is a milestone that CSIS and the CDE will be in, or will be particularly on the lookout for this EOI, and an inability to resolve all errors by July 12th 
may result in an at-risk status, triggering communications and support from CSIS and the CDE to LEA coordinators and leadership. Uh, if you'd like to get a jump start on your errors now, you are able to navigate to the data discrepancies page in CalPads and view data discrepancies triggering on your data that is currently in CalPads. You don't need to wait for the snapshot uh, or wait to begin submitting records to see your existing uh, data discrepancies. And to navigate to the data discrepancies page, uh, we would simply, inside of CalPads, uh, using the left-hand navigation menu, we would simply click data discrepancies. Uh, once that page does load, uh, we'll need to be sure that we filter for uh, our LEA and then we filter for the EOI that we are uh, looking to determine our data discrepancies for. Currently, several LEAs, the majority of LEAs have uh, existing errors in end of year three. Um, and so if you go to end of year three with your LEA, you'll be able to see those existing errors uh, in the summary grid. And it's likely that many of the errors will indicate missing records if you have not yet submitted data. Uh, so that is the uh, July 12th date and uh, ensuring that you are able to resolve uh, certification errors and data discrepancies by that date. Next up, uh, from July 15th through July 19th, you should be collaborating with local data stewards, site leaders, and administrators, sending them reports for review, verification, and approval. From July 22nd through July 26th, you should be working to tie up any loose ends and certify by the initial deadline of July 26th. For end of year one and end of year two, this will be your final push for certification. For end of year three and end of year four, you'll need to go through the further step of SELPA approval during the amendment window, July 29th to August 16th. The final deadline to obtain SELPA approval and certification for end of year three and end of year four is set to August 16th, 2024. And again, there is an added sense of urgency this year regarding the August 16th deadline, as it's earlier than in previous years due to the earlier release of the California School Dashboard. The certification process does differ depending on the end of year data collection in question. Certain EOI collections require both LEA and SELPA approval and others require only LEA approval to certify. EOY1 and EOY2 require only a single level of approval with LEA approval. EOY3 and EOY4 require two levels of approval, LEA approval and SELPA approval. This is due to the nature of EOY3 and EOY4 involving students with disabilities, as well as incident and absence data that SELPAs will need to review. For your own reference and understanding, much of the information covered in today's session can also be found in the end of year reporting roadmap page in the CalPads user manual. So let's go ahead and navigate to the user manual now to take a look. Uh, this is the landing page that we arrive at if we go to the URL for the CalPads user manual, which is documentation.calpads.org. And without scrolling, if we uh, take a look at the orange headings at about the middle of the page here, we see the EOI roadmap as the middle heading. And if we click view details, it will take us to the EOI reporting roadmap uh, page. This page contains much of the information that we'll discuss today. It does contain a recording of last year's version of the of this presentation. It contains the 23 to 24 or 22 to 23, I'm sorry, end of year primer, as well as the data collection calendar, information on the ACGR, our suggested milestones and submission checklist, relevant flash communications, um, there are some reminders and summaries of changes for each of the uh, EOI collections. Uh, below that, we have strategies, so data we can start submitting now, further strategies and game plans, and then we have resources and documentation uh, for use during the, the EOI data collections. Uh, the EOI reporting roadmap is incredibly helpful when going through any of the four EOI data collections, and what is particularly helpful in this page is the EOI submission checklist, uh, which you can download by clicking the download checklist link here. I have downloaded the EOI checklist, so I'll go ahead and pull that up now. Uh, 
All right. So when you open the EOI checklist, uh, the first tab contains the suggested milestones for the 23 to 24 end of year data collections. The second tab contains the checklist itself. Uh, the checklist has three columns. The first column contains all of the tasks necessary uh, in order to certify high quality data by CalPATS reporting deadlines. The tasks are grouped under headings. Uh, the first heading is EOY preparation. So these are tasks to complete before the opening of the end of year data collection. So before May 7th, we then have tasks for end of year one, and uh, certification reports to be reviewed and verified in end of year one. We have tasks to complete in end of year two and an end of year two report. We have tasks to complete in end of year three and end of year three reports and tasks to complete in end of year four with end of year four reports. There's additional section at the uh, very bottom uh, for tasks to complete with regards to the ODS cohort poll. Again, the cohort poll happens on August 15th. Uh, there are three columns. The first column contains the tasks. The second column allows you to list responsible parties uh, for each task. And the final column uh, allows you to list the date that the task was completed. If uh, there is no date listed, uh, we can assume the task was not completed. Some LEAs do wish to have a uh, an additional column to list the due date. And if you would like to add an additional column, you can simply download this checklist and uh, add a fourth column to the table. The final tab in the EOI submission checklist contains uh, a list of certification reports uh, that will need to be reviewed and verified in order to uh, certify the data collection. Those certification reports are bolded in the uh, tab. And then we have supporting reports uh, that are uh, in standard font, so non-bolded font. And these supporting reports help you to interpret and reconcile the certification reports with your local student information system. So that's the uh, EOI submission checklist, uh, which can be found in the EOI reporting roadmap page of the CalPADS user manual. It's a very helpful resource in uh, end of year reporting. That does conclude our overview of all four of the end of year data collections together. So let's now go ahead and jump into our discussion of each of the data submissions uh, individually 